Howdy folks. So what I want to do now, I've got a simple contract here and I want to interact with something other than my local uh, JavaScript VM. So I'm in my deploy and run transactions tab here. And if I look at my environment, I've got JavaScript VM. So that's the back end to remix. I've got injected web three. So this says the environment has been provided by MetaMask or a similar provider. So what we'll be doing is, as it says, injecting some web three and we need to direct it where to go. And then we have here a web three provider. Uh, and this will actually be able to connect to an Ethereum node. And that's why the warning sign says that it can lead to loss of real money. So we'll steer clear of that for now. And let's click injected web three. So it says no provider found. Please make sure MetaMask is active and running. So let's go have a look at MetaMask here. So MetaMask is a crypto wallet. So it's just a way for your web browser to interact with the blockchain. And I think it's supported by Chrome and Brave and Firefox at the moment. So there'll be an extension depending on your browser. Okay, so install for Chrome. So Brave is just acting like Chrome here. So that's fine. You don't actually have to load up Chrome. So we see here, um, uh, quick introduction. So what I'm going to do is add to Brave. And a little disclaimer, that's fine. I'm going to add the extension. It's going to let me know that uh, MetaMask can communicate with other web hosts. So there could be a bit of a security risk here, which is what they're saying. Always be cautious. Okay, so welcome to MetaBask, and this is kind of their logo, and it's known for following your mouse. So let's get started here. And so you can import a wallet, you need a seed phrase, or you can create a wallet. So let's click create a wallet. And this wallet that we create, you can then come back at a later date and re-import. So let's go ahead and create a wallet. Uh, so just a little disclaimer here, very important. It says never collect keys. Okay, so these are your cryptographic private keys, which basically will, if anyone obtains them, lets anyone have access uh, to anything that those keys can access. And of course they can run away and disappear. Okay, so let's create a new password and let's say hola amigos. So secret backup phrase, this is very important. Every time you create a account, you have the option of using a recovery phrase if you forget your password or you lose your keys or something like that. But this backup phrase, let's go ahead and reveal, is linked to your keys. So these words in this order are derived from your private keys. So these words act as a stand-in or a substitute if you lose your private keys. Now that also means that you must keep them extremely private. So it says here, memorize this phrase. So you may have heard people talk about brain wallet and this is one of the main ways people do that is you can create a story using these words uh, and then no matter what, you have your private keys with you and you can recover your funds. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this and paste it in to notepad here. Okay, so next I'm going to have to put my words in order. So once my words are in, I will confirm and MetaMask should now be up and running. Okay, so I've got account one here. I can click on details. I have a QR code and I have an address. So this 0x tells me that it is an Ethereum compatible address. As you do lots of these, you'll get to recognize them. And we have some links here and we can have a look at the private key, which is linked to those words that I just 
copied down as my backup. And I don't have any ETH because it's a brand new account. And up here, I can see the different networks. So main Ethereum network, this is the Ethereum network that uses real ether and costs real gas to deploy contracts on. Ropstan, Covan, and Rinkby, these are all the main test networks. Uh, you can um, connect to your own local host. So if you're using Truffle and Ganache, for example, uh, then you can interact with MetaMask this way, or you can uh, set up your own custom setup. For this session, let's just select Ropsten and let's rename this account. So I'm just going to call it test one. I'll be creating a new account in a moment. In Brave, I now have access to MetaMask up here. And if you see the fox in color, it means you are connected to Brave. So if I close this tab, let's close these tabs. I see that I still have access to MetaMask and it lets me know that MetaMask has access to this site. So if I open up a new tab, same thing, I have access. So just be aware of this. After you finish your MetaMask business, it will still be active in the browser uh, if you leave your browser open. Okay, so back into Remix. Now let's try Injected Web 3. Make sure MetaMask is active and running. You may have to reload the page. Excellent advice. Let's reload the site. Go back to Solidity. And so now I have a notification pop up. I'll just drag it into the window. So here it's letting me know I want to connect to Robston Test Network as a request. Uh, the Remix IDE wants to connect with Test1. That's the account that I created and you need to give it permission. So I will click connect. And now my address in here is 0xA56. If I go back to MetaMask, I can see here test one, the address is 0xA56. So I'm now connected to that account. Notice also that I only have one account in the list. When I was using the uh, JavaScript VM, I had five accounts. And the other thing is that I have zero ether. So let's try to deploy this contract with zero ether. So my simple hello world contract deploy. So I get a notification pop up. And straight away, it tells me that I need this much gas. And I have insufficient funds, which is exactly what I expected. I have zero ether. And so my only option is to reject. Over here, I could confirm the transaction. So now because I'm interacting with an external provider, every single time uh, there's a transaction, I need to give permission. Okay, so let's reject that. What can we do about this? Well, let's get some Ether. So I need to know that I am on the Robston network. So to get some of this Ether on the Robston network, I am going to just do a quick search for a Ropston faucet. So a faucet implies that there is a drip of one ether every five seconds here on this one. Just like a leaky faucet slowly gives away water, and a crypto faucet slowly gives away crypto. So enter your account address here and send me the test ether. So let's go back to my account, I can copy the account right here and I can enter my testnet address, click send me the test ether and I'll get a confirmation and a hash. So we can use this hash to go inspect the transaction. Here are the details on Ropston, and we can see here ropston.etherscan.io. So etherscan is uh, one of the common block explorers, hash, pending. 
So because this is test ether, but it's actually been mined and will actually be sent to my account, I need to wait for this to happen. So here we go, that did not take too long. So now I have one ETH in my test account. So let's go back to Remix and we can see it's updated straight away to one ETH. Okay, so uh, success just came up on Etherscan. It says it took four blocks to confirm. An Ethereum block is about, let's say, let's just call it 15 seconds. So it took a little bit over a minute for it to get four block confirmations. Okay, so now I have an Ether in my test account. Let's try to deploy this contract. So again, I get a pop-up here and I'm gonna to have to pay some gas. So I'm gonna confirm that. And in my terminal here, I can now see it being written to Etherscan. So I just got a Windows notification saying that MetaMask confirmed the transaction. I can open this up and I can see uh, a hash. I can see that it came from my MetaMask account, 056A matches up here, and so on. Okay, let's open my contract and let's call hello. So there's my output. Hello there, amigo. Here's my call down in the terminal and my string. Hello there, amigo. And let's call get Jeff. And now remember my simple contract here for get Jeff, I'm gonna update the variable and then return the value. And this one I said does consume gas. So I'll drag in my notification here and we can see the price of this transaction, the gas fee. Now remember the last one, I think it was 511 and this is 28. So we can see the difference in magnitude of these simple transactions. So the contract was much more expensive by an order of magnitude and then some to this transaction. So I'm gonna click confirm and we have some notifications in the terminal. And because this is going on the real test network, this takes some time um, for these transactions to come through. So there we go, I just got another transaction confirmation and I can have a look down here at what happened. So it called get Jeff. Okay, let's look at something in Etherscan that we can have a look at. So it says to the contract. So when I called get Jeff, that was a transaction that then called this contract. So let's have a look at the contract. And we can see here, I've got just a couple transactions, contract creation and I had called another get Jeff. You can see here that no value has been sent. Okay, that's because I didn't actually send any ether to any other contracts or any other participants, but we do have the fees down here. So the creation fee and then the calling fee for get Jeff. So let's have a look at the contract and so we can't really tell what's going on here, but what you can do is decompile the bytecode. And you can do this with any contracts. Uh, Ethereum is public, and so you can have a look at what the contracts are. And so a decompiler is going to take basically uh, the machine code and it's going to build it back into something that's human readable. And so you can read more about this. So I'm gonna click decompile the bytecode. and have a look at these results. Now, I already did this. If it's the first time you're doing this, you'll be asked to refresh. But we can see here some, uh, some interesting bits here. So we have some storage. So that's the unsigned int that, is, that I called Jeff right here. Um, some comments, regular functions. that has been relabeled this and it's payable. We're gonna update the storage and we're gonna return. 
So decompiling the bytecode is only showing us the most important parts that are required. You can't decompile any comments because those are stripped away. So anything like this would be a waste of storage and computation. So those won't be saved. So that's kind of an interesting thing you can do with Etherscan. Okay, so back in Remix, if we look at my account, we can see here that it started out 1, 1 1.0, and it has been decreasing much more quickly than when I was using the JavaScript VM. And that's because I'm actually um, sending transactions to a real network, although everybody's agreed that it does not have value. And miners are mining these transactions. So the balance is decreasing more quickly. So next up, I think we will look at how we can have multiple accounts and be able to send value back and forth between accounts.